Finally, sim racing material time. This is an instrument, I know really well how to play it and I know that this particular one, it's out of tune. So let's see what you can do with it. Now I will show you what happens with these potentiometers that makes the driving a little bit floppy because they get dirty inside and they start trembling a bit but that's a, um, a very reoccurring problem so you clean them and after a week they are the same so the main issue is when we accelerate the pedal travel has some inconsistencies during the way and the clutch pedal suffers more or less from the same thing this one is acting more or less okay but uh, it, sometimes it jumps a little bit so we are going to correct this problem forever by changing the potentiometers to hull sensors let's do it it's a simple modification so to fix this we only need some 3d printed parts some hull sensors and some neodymium magnets and we are good to go I don't think this magnet has enough strength but let's see how it performs disassembling these pedals is very easy you just need to take these three screws out and the sensor is out so this is the problematic the problematic part these potentiometers start to get greasy start to get grime inside and they become erratic so I will be sure that I can do this replacement with this cable connected to see what the pinout is and replace this potentiometer with the hull sensor so now we need to check the pinout of the pedals and I'll do it via this USB connector. So here in the red is ground, the white is 3.3 volts and the middle one it's signal I think. So when we change the potentiometer yeah, it will go down to 0 volts. So white wire is 3.3 volts, green wire is signal, red wire is ground. So disconnected from the computer and I will not desolder the potentiometer because I want to remember what were the position of the original cables if something goes wrong. So I'll cut them as close to the solder points as I can. So three wires free okay always remembering the white one is 3.3 volts the red one is ground and the signal one is the green now just to make a fast test I will strip these wires and make a provisional connection to the whole sensor to test if the whole sensor is good for these pedals. Strip the wires, grab some fresh solder we will solder the white wire to the first pin the ground wire to the second pin and we will solder the signal wire to the third pin always taking care that none of the pins touch each other it might seem a bit dangerous but our sensor is connected provisionally to our pedals so we can test it let's take a magnet closer and we'll see what values we can get on the computer so now, as a first approximation, I can use this magnet 
and take it closer to the sensor and I can see on the computer screen that I have some action I just need to check what is the correct position for these magnets to work and what range is possible to achieve with the movement of the pedals so everything seems to be working fine now it's just a matter of assembling the sensors on the 3D printed supports reassemble the pedals and test the magnet positioning I will bend this sensor in an L shape so I can insert it in the 3D printed part and it can sit flush on this top and then I'll solder the connections here on the back so we will fit this in here and the wires will, will be soldered to the sensor I should have desoldered the wires from the potentiometer this extra length is missing now so okay, don't be as dumb as me and don't do the same to your pedals and solder the original wires so after a crappy solder job and some rewiring I think the sensor is good I'll apply the hot glue to insulate it and we will test the magnet positioning on the pedal applying some hot glue to keep these wires away from each other and it's okay just need to put a bit more in here make sure that the wires don't connect together and it will be fine as long as these wires don't touch each other so this is enough to keep everything together let's reassemble this and test the magnet positioning so you just need to pull the wire back connect it in its position and send this through its original position so here it goes and now we just need to apply the original screws let's connect to the computer and test it as you can see the sensor is down there and we just need to put the magnet on this part on this part of the pedal to make the magnet closer to the sensor so here I have a neodymium magnet it's a small one but it's enough for me to test if I can see the pedal reacting on the computer screen and as you can see I can calibrate so I know what is the orientation at which the magnet should be and now I will make some tests using double-sided tape sticking to the magnet and seeing if I can make a simulation of the pedal function after getting a more or less good position for the magnet we can see that the pedal travel on the computer is very smooth I can try to show you here the pedal travel is more or less smooth it's not a hundred percent linear that's the only problem that we might have here but I think it is a lot better than it was with the original potentiometers so after calibrating I think our accelerator is good now let's do the clutch now on to the clutch pedal trying not to repeat the same mistakes we did with the other one so this is a different potentiometer these wires were smashed 
on the assembly and uh, the potentiometer housing was cracked on the assembling. So let's check if the pinout is the same as it was on the accelerator pedal. We get our multimeter in continuity mode and we will compare it with the USB ground. USB ground is there, so red is ground, 3.3 volts is in the white and the signal one is the green. So the pin out of the clutch is exactly the same as in the accelerator. So this time I will not make the same mistake and now I will desolder the old wires even if they look smashed to the housing. So, new solder. One wire is free. The other wire, the other wire is also free. And the third wire will be free right now. Okay, so here we have our three wires and our potentiometer, our old potentiometer is free to go to the cemetery. The sensor should be like this, in this position. And now you can solder the wires under the support. So we solder, we glue them and this will stay like this inside the pedal. Super glue, it super glues your fingers and nothing else. Now let's solder some wires. So the white one goes to pin one. It's a little bit of skill, but it goes in there. So this time was much easier, three wires in their three positions and now it's just a matter of putting hot glue and getting the sensor back together. And we can put it inside its housing. Screw back time. So the installation of the sensors is done. I'll put a link for the 3D printed parts on the description below and for other videos of the same repair. So let's connect the pedals and test them with magnets. Here we have our magnets, there are two magnets in here, held together with double sided tape. I put a long strip to be easier to peel them back if necessary. And our hull sensor is down here, the hull sensor down there, and the magnet. So after fine tuning this with the magnet position, the pedals are working fine. I will only make a change that is buying standard magnets for both pedals. Okay, so this is working fine. Hall sensor modification works. So these pedals are new. So as you can see, now the pedals are working perfectly with very good linearity. I just don't, don't have enough strength to pull on the brake with my hands because this is a load cell pedal with lots of kilograms of force, like in a real car. So, now you can see that everything is working correctly. I've used some magnets that I had lying around to more or less get a good linearity on the pedal travel. And now I'll try to, to buy some standard magnets 
to replace these ones that I've glued with double-sided tape just to make tests to see if the concept works. So the pedals are working perfectly, now they just need to be raised. Thank you very much for watching and good sim racing. Bye bye!